In this clip we'll talk about derived timers. There's three types of derived timers. Off delay, self resetting and recycling. We'll start off with off delay. I've got a circuit that I've put up here for you to show an example of off delay and that's just uh, rung 0 and rung 1. Now with an off delay timer the timer must begin when the input is off. So that in itself can be a little confusing until you get the hang of it. So if we think about it like turning the switch off will start the timer timing. So the program here demonstrates an input, a closed input on the on, and when I turn the input off, it will start timing. Now I've put an extra rung in here just to uh, consolidate that. So at the moment the input is on, and that bit there is just to demonstrate that we have actually got the input on, and that same input is programmed into this off delay timer. And you can see how it works. If the input is off, obviously nothing's going to happen. But when this input here is the on input goes off, this becomes true here. The timer is activated and it self resets itself here. So when the done bit goes off, the output goes off. So you'll see that when I turn this off, this will go true here through the done bit and turn the output on. When the time period is up, the output will go off. Now I've got a 10 second time base here, so there's plenty of time to talk about it. So if I'll, I'll use toggle here because I'm using my emulator. So I'll toggle a bit off. Immediately the timer starts timing. We've turned it off, remember. We're timing up. The output's on all of the time and then it goes off. So that time period is time when it goes off. So just remember that I've turned the input off, it starts timing. Now you can actually have this either way. That doesn't have to be on. That can be, this could be an open contact. So therefore that time a bit could go on when it was the time when period is finished. So that's a derived off delay timer. On rung 2 we have a self resetting timer or a continuously resetting timer. Pretty common as a uh, uh, easy to build clock pulse. Just remember that the output's only going to be active for one scan when the timer's finished its time period. So you can't really sensibly use that output to demonstrate something that's on because it's only only true for one scan but certainly for a time base setting up a time base a regular time base it's it's pretty easy and the Allen Bradley SLC doesn't have an easily configurable uh, uh, clock pulse within it as some other PLCs have so this may be the answer to easily configure that with this one it's uh, a simple start input and it's got a closed bit of its done bit so if I turn the start bit on the timer starts timing and I've got a little done bit here to pulse its output uh, this is not absolutely necessary uh, in your circuit I've just put it there to demonstrate it but you can use the uh, done bit of that timer anywhere in your circuit to perform a regular pulsing so I'll right click here and give it a toggle and you'll see now that it's uh, five seconds on and off and you just notice then there's a bit of a toggle there. Uh, don't take any notice of these circuits below, they're, not, uh, they're just affected by that input but uh, really we're looking at this rung here, just rung two. So you'll see every five seconds we've got a pulse. It's a one scan pulse but it is a regular time base and you can of course adjust this to any, what, anything you want so you can make a one second pulse, a five second pulse or you can have it less than a second if you want to change the time base so that's a handy 
self-resetting timer. In this uh, part of the derived timers, we've got the recycle timer. And that requires two timers to be included in the circuit. And you'll notice here that the done bit of timer 3 is in the actuation rung for timer 2. And the done bit for timer 2 is in the actuation rung for timer 3. So they're controlling each other. Uh, that's why sometimes you'll hear them called cross-coupled. I've got a start bit here that'll turn the whole thing on. And these timers will do their thing. I've set one at uh, two seconds, one at five seconds. You can have them those settings the same, or you can have them set differently. I've also got a bit of the start button here uh, in case I wanted this output to be on when the time period starts. I can set this to be true or false here, and the output will be on. But because I don't want that out to be put to be on unless I've got the timer circuit going I've put another bit here oh, and you can play around with that There's certainly uh, many variations of it so I'll just turn it on now I'll toggle it on to get it going and you'll see the timer timing and you'll see the behavior of the output there it's on for five seconds and off for two okay so that's a pretty easy way to construct a nice little flasher or some sort of uh, continuous period timer that you can change the uh, both the on and the off periods for call a recycle timer so that's derived timers